G'day overclockers, benchers, and gamers. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to have a quick squiz at the Xeon X3450. Now this is a uh, server-based processor in the socket 1156 format. So if you're still on that older, older format uh, motherboard, um, this may very well be a, a cheap upgrade for you. The Xeons can be had for roughly, I'd say, 15 through to maybe $30 on eBay. I picked this particular one up for $20, $22, and that was shipped. So it's it's pretty cheap, um, and you can't really go wrong with the Xeons, especially if you've got like one of the older Gigabytes or the Asus motherboards that support these uh, little beasts. Now, the X3450s have a, uh, a base frequency of 2.6 gig with uh, 20 times multiplier with a maximum turbo frequency of 3.2 gig and it's a four core processor with a total of now the desktop equivalent to this would probably be the i7 860 and which still go for a lot on eBay so yeah don't waste your money on the um, the actual i7 desktop because they're a freaking waste of money and these Xeon processors clock just as well, if not even better than the desktop equivalent. Alright guys, let's get into this. Enough mucking around. Straight into BIOS, Control F1. Advanced frequency settings. Oh, we load optimize first. Intelligent. Tweaker, advanced frequency. Now the max multi is 21 times. So bang that straight to 21, which takes us up to a base of 2.8. Enable all the uh, power saving and uh, state supports. Keep the processor a bit cooler in Windows. Don't need to muck around with the QPO. Chuck the memory on the lowest, which is 6 on this motherboard. Enable the base clock and we'll whack that to say 175 which takes our non-turbo frequency to 3.71 gig. Now the turbo will be, I think, around 4.2 for one or two cores. LLC enabled. Um, try 1.25 vCore to start and see how we go, see if we can put it into Windows. RAM at the, at the stock, 1.6 volts. Tidy up the, the basics. Disable full screen. Then into uh, OHCI mode for the for the SSD. Save that and um, reboot. Alright, so I boot it up. It's a good sign. Well, we didn't quite make it to Windows. I will say we need to increase the voltage to probably 1.3. Hit the reset button because I can't be bothered waiting. Straight back into BIOS. And whack the volts. Uh, probably. Yeah, we'll try 1.3. See if we can boot into Windows at that. All right, so we made it into Windows this time. That 1.3 volts, crank up real temp to 
check this out. Okay then, so looks like we need to increase the volts a little bit more. So, I think we'll probably just whack it to 1.35 and see how we go. Hit delete, control F1. Yeah, I think I think we're going to. Um, oh, we'll try 1.325 first and see how we go with that. Okay, so here we are back in Windows again. Uh, crack, up, crack open real temp and CPU Z just to make sure the voltages are semi accurate. CPU temps seem to be reasonable. Now, our processor is turboing to. 4.2 gig, 4.238 gigahertz. Now that would be the maximum turbo, which is 24 times. But the 4.2 gigahertz, I see why it was crashing before. Yeah. Anyway, so let's uh, we'll start prime and see how we go. Well, it's lasted a few seconds at least, so we'll give that and temp seem quite high. Anyway, we'll let that run for 10 or, 10 or 15 minutes and see how we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next video.